Hey, Daisy. Huh? Robert? Why are you texting me? Is there a meeting scheduled for you and Tiffany soon? Do you want to see her? No, it's not about Tiffany. Are you dating that guy? What do you mean by dating that guy? What the hell are you talking about? You know exactly what I'm talking about. No, Robert. I don't know what you're talking about. What if I'm dating someone for real? Anyway, I'm single. Don't you find it weird that your ex-husband is asking his ex-wife if she's dating anyone? We didn't even divorce on good terms. So that's the truth. You're dating your boss. Now I understand why you coldly decided to get a divorce. Don't speak so casually. You're being unreasonable. I'm not dating my boss. You're not dating. But the two of you went to see a musical together. It's proof that you're dating. I just don't know when it started. Are you really going to deny that obvious fact? Why can't I go to the musical with my coworker? It was you who told me that women don't go to musicals with men they don't have feelings for. We've been to the theater together many times. It was just a coincidence. He also likes watching musicals and his chair is right next to mine. We worked in the same department, so before we entered the auditorium, we sat and talked. That's all. Coincidence? How could anything in the world be so suspiciously coincidental? Why not? Can you explain why you and your mistress watched the same play with me when there were five different plays at the time? If it's not a coincidence, was it intentional? But you had a thing with him before. That's why you insisted on getting a divorce. Even though I expected you to think again. Do not blame me. This marriage broke down because of you. I'm not blaming you. I've seen it firsthand. Did I hug or touch him intimately? You're the one who embraced your young lover as if you wanted to let everyone in the world know you're having an affair. It was you who allowed her to move into our house. You've been racking your brain on how you can move in with her. I've already fulfilled your wish. Are you still dissatisfied? Stop acting like the victim here. You still won't admit your fault. What fault? You had feelings for him, and you two had feelings for each other since before we divorced. <laughs> Are we all like that? It may be like one person, hate for another. The grass is always greener on the other side, right, Robert? There's also the whole theory that even though you have a crush on one person, you're still looking for another? Does that sound familiar to you? Theory? We broke up, and nothing can be saved. Why do you have to make yourself the scapegoat all the time? You're such a good nitpicker. You get mad and say you've been cheated on, but I've been cheated on as well. When did I cheat on you? Speak it, specifically. You have feelings for your boss, and so does he. So the two of you publicly dated after we filed for divorce. So why am I the only one being tortured for having feelings for someone else? That's not fair. Did I do that to you? Did I insult or beat you? Or did I scold and force you to admit that you had an affair and even use my money to buy her a car and a house? You have a crush on someone else. Admit it honestly, and apologize to me. Don't deceive yourself. I already have a hunch about this. No wonder he helped you so much in your work. We have no feelings for each other at all. Yesterday was really just a coincidence. You want me to believe that nonsense? I'm not forcing you to believe me, but not everyone is as selfish as you are, that's for sure. I saw him drive you home after the concert. You know when I go to the movies, I won't drive. He asked me where to park the car. No, I don't have to explain to you. Why should I explain when there's nothing between us? I have no fault with you. You don't? Yes. How many more times do I have to reassure you? Tomorrow, I'm taking Tiffany home with me. I'll be taking care of her from now on. Say something that makes sense. She chose to stay with me. You have no right to take her anywhere without my consent. But you will remarry. You are the one who'll remarry. Cindy is a kind-hearted and amicable woman, so she'll devote herself to raising Tiffany to be a good girl. Is she more dedicated than me? I'm the one who gave birth to Tiffany. How can you take my daughter away from me? And is she really so kind-hearted and amicable? Tell me, is it amicable to seduce a married man 15 years older than you? Whatever. Try touching Tiffany again. I certainly won't let you live in peace like now. I can't let Tiffany grow up with her stepfather. So what's the difference between living with a stepmother? Isn't Vanessa still at my house? 
A grandmother who can take care of my daughter 24-7 is still better than a mother who goes out to work and always goes on business trips. Does she have the same bloodline? Cindy told me that Vanessa was your first love. That's why you never called her mother. You always call Vanessa rather intimately. Just thinking about you cuddling intimately with her makes me feel sick. Live happily with your old first love and your young mistress. You're being ridiculous, Daisy. You can't take care of her the way I can. You're always working, always traveling. Tiffany needs stability. She needs a proper home. Don't you dare tell me what my daughter needs. I am her mother, and I know what's best for her. You are not taking her away from me. Do you hear me? You think you can stop me, Daisy? You're nothing but a weak, pathetic woman. You couldn't even keep your husband from straying. How do you expect to keep your daughter? You will not take my daughter away from me. I will fight you tooth and nail, and I will not back down until Tiffany is safe with me. You're delusional, Daisy. You don't stand a chance. Stay away from me and don't disrupt my life again. If you try to take my daughter away and subject her to those terrible people, don't blame me for ending your relationship with Tiffany. What have you done to my daughter? I let her hang out with you for one day and now she's in the hospital? How could you leave her here alone like that? I didn't want to leave her, but Cindy said she was tired, so I drove her home. Besides, I also called you to take care of Tiffany. Don't overreact, okay? What? Cindy was with you two? Didn't we make a clear agreement that you should never let Tiffany have contact with your mistress? How dare you violate the agreement? I didn't do it on purpose. Cindy has work nearby, so I happened to bring her in at the same time. It can't be counted as a breach of the agreement. You left your daughter in the hospital just because your mistress said she was tired? You could have at least waited for me to come. Do you know how serious Tiffany's condition is? She's having a panic attack and a severe allergic reaction. What have you done to my girl? How could it be that serious? Are you saying that just to prevent me from seeing my daughter again? Don't think everyone has tricks like you. What did you guys do today? Please tell me everything so I can talk to the doctor to find out why she's so sick. I really can't understand what kind of father you are just to leave her in the hospital and go. Hey, watch your mouth. What kind of father am I? Do you want to start a fight with me now? Now is not the time to argue. Tell me what you did and what you fed Tiffany. Today we went to the amusement park to play. At first, she had fun playing on the wooden swing and eating cotton candy. Everything was going well. But for some reason, when I wanted her to go on the roller coaster, she started crying and refused to go. I had to pick her up and push her into the seat to fasten her seatbelt before she would ride it. You've raised her to be such a weak and fearful child. She's just like her mother. What? You forced her to ride a roller coaster? How could you do that? She has acrophobia, for God's sake. Just climbing up a treehouse makes her feel dizzy. Why would you make her play a game that could put her life in danger? What? Acrophobia? How's this the first time I'm hearing about this? Even if that's the case, it's just a mental illness. If she tries it again and again, she'll get used to it, and the illness will naturally disappear. That makes zero sense, Robert. She's had this condition since she was five years old. Don't you remember when she climbed a tree to save a kitten? and she slipped and fell to the ground from a height of 15 feet and was seriously injured? Since then, she's always been afraid of heights. You were there with me when we discussed it, and now you're saying you don't know anything? Hmm, I guess that did happen. But you can't blame me. I have so many things to take care of that I can't remember all those little details. Little details? It's related to your daughter's life, and you call it little details? Did you know that every time she's at that height, she becomes short of breath, nauseous, and cognitively impaired for days. Just a moment ago, while she was in a coma, she was still screaming, Daddy, I'm scared! That's impossible. After the roller coaster ride, she seemed healthy, just a little pale and wobbly. I just thought she was hungry because it was lunchtime, so I bought her a Snickers bar. And for no reason, after eating, she suddenly felt short of breath. She broke out in a rash, and she fainted, so I took her to the hospital. What? A Snickers bar? 
Did you know that there's a lot of peanut butter in Snickers? Of course, everyone knows that. It's very delicious. You have completely lost your mind. Tiffany is allergic to peanuts. You bought her a Snickers bar even though you know she has a peanut allergy? <laughs> she went into anaphylaxis and the doctor said that if she had just been 10 minutes late with treatment, she may <laughs> have never woken up again. I... I totally forgot about it. But why didn't she tell me about her allergy when I gave her the Snickers? That's irresponsible and dangerous. You could have killed her. And now you're trying to blame her for not telling you? She's just seven years old, Robert. It is possible that she was in shock and panic after getting off the bullet train and ate whatever you gave her without noticing. But it's your responsibility as a parent to remember these things and take care of her. I didn't mean to harm her. I just forgot about her allergy. And it's not like you reminded me about her illness. How was I supposed to know? You should have known on your own. It's your job to keep her safe and healthy. I trusted you to take my daughter out, which means you have the responsibility to take care of and protect her. And now she's in the hospital because of your negligence. I can't believe you would do something like this. Okay, okay, I get it. I messed up. But you have to understand that I'm under a lot of pressure. I have a lot on my plate right now. What could be more important than your daughter? Your job? Your little mistress? That's not what I meant. But this wouldn't have happened if you hadn't forbidden me from being close to Tiffany. If I had been around her, I would have understood her habits and illnesses. So in order to stop something like this from happening again, I'm gonna take her back to my house after she gets out of the hospital. What? After everything that's happened, if you still refuse to admit your fault and still find ridiculous reasons to justify your indifference, do you think I'm stupid enough to trust you with my daughter again? Furthermore, up till now, you haven't even asked about Tiffany's condition. It's not that I don't want to ask. It's just that I haven't had the chance yet. So how's Tiffany now? Is she still in serious condition? The doctor has just checked and given her some medicine. Now her condition is better. Thank God she's awake now. So that means she's not in serious condition. If that's the case, I'll be more careful and read the ingredients carefully before giving her anything to eat in the future. Also, I won't let her play games on high anymore. I feel like you're trying to cause trouble so that I can't see my daughter anymore. You went too far. How dare you make my daughter do such a disgusting thing? You've crossed the line. What are you talking about? Everything's fine. What's the point of being so mad? Tiffany told me that ever since you came to the amusement park, you've been making her call Cindy mother. How could you do that? Are you trying to replace me with Cindy step by step? Thankfully, Tiffany is well educated and knows the difference between right and wrong. So she refused to call a home wrecker who ruined our family her mother. But since she refused your request, you changed your attitude and made her play games that she didn't like, even though she begged you not to. And when Cindy gave her the Snickers bar, Tiffany told her she had allergies. But because she couldn't get Tiffany to call her mom, she forced that Snickers bar into her mouth. You guys are like the devil! Now I understand why you were in such a hurry to leave the hospital. I can't believe you're accusing me of something so ridiculous. Cindy is very considerate. She would never do such evil things. And I would never try to replace you as Tiffany's mother. I just ask her to do it for fun. And as for games, I was just trying to have some fun with her. I didn't force her to do anything she didn't want to do. Are you serious right now? You deny everything Tiffany just told me? And you're defending your mistress instead of your own daughter? You're unbelievable. I'm not denying anything, but I think Tiffany might have misunderstood or exaggerated some things. And you're blowing things out of proportion. And I'm not defending Cindy. I'm just saying she's not capable of doing such things. How can you say that? Your love for Cindy so blinds you that you're ignoring the fact that she's manipulating our daughter. And you have the nerve to call me crazy when I'm just trying to protect our child from your harmful behavior. You're overreacting, Daisy. It's not like I'm trying to harm Tiffany. I love her just as much as you do. And Cindy is a good person. She's always been nice to Tiffany. Nice to Tiffany? She's trying to take my place as her mother and you're letting her. You're supposed to be on our daughter's side, not hers. I can't believe you can't see how wrong this is. 
You're putting our daughter in danger by letting Cindy get so close to her. That's not true, Daisy. You're just being paranoid. You've brought this upon yourself, Robert. I'm done with your lies and excuses. I won't let you hurt my daughter any longer. I'm taking legal action. And you can be damn sure that I'll make sure you never come near Tiffany again. What? You have no right. I will take all the medical papers today to sue you for harming my daughter's mental and physical health and will ask the court for an injunction to ban you from approaching my daughter. And you can bet your bottom dollar that I'll make sure you never come near Tiffany again. You can't do that. You're just trying to punish me because you're jealous of Cindy. You are being unreasonable. Unreasonable? You've been manipulating and emotionally abusing my daughter for your own selfish needs. You're the one who's being unreasonable. And don't dare try to blame me for your own mistakes. But what about Tiffany? You can't just take her away from me. She's my daughter too. Tiffany made her own decision. She doesn't want to see you or talk to you anymore. You've lost her, Robert. No, please, Daisy. Please give me another chance to make up for my mistakes. I promise I would never do anything to harm Tiffany. I'll do anything she wants. Please, just believe me one more time. Your begging won't change anything, Robert. You've caused irreparable damage to our family, and I won't let you hurt us anymore. Please, Daisy, don't do this. I love Tiffany, and I need to be a part of her life. Love? Is that what you call emotionally manipulating and abusing your own daughter? You're not fit to be a father, Robert. I made a mistake, but I'm willing to make it right. Please, just give me another chance. I've given you too many chances already, Robert, and you've squandered every single one of them. I won't let you hurt Tiffany anymore. You're being unfair. You're taking my daughter away from me because of one mistake. One mistake? This isn't just one mistake, Robert. This is so much more emotional abuse and manipulation. You've traumatized Tiffany, and I won't let you do it anymore. I can change. I can be a better father. Please, just give me one more chance. I've heard enough, Robert. It's time for you to face the consequences of your actions. I won't let you hurt us anymore. I'm done with you. After that, I followed through with my plan to take legal action against Robert. And with the help of the evidence I had gathered, I was successful in obtaining an injunction to keep him away from Tiffany. Robert, desperate to be a part of his daughter's life, tried to appeal the court's decision, but was ultimately unsuccessful. He lost custody of Tiffany and was forbidden from seeing her, as well as having any contact with her. Then, Robert and Cindy's relationship began to crumble. Without kids, their bond had weakened and they began to fight more often. Eventually, Cindy grew tired of Robert's constant pleading to see his daughter and decided to end their relationship. Meanwhile, Tiffany and I moved on with our lives and began to heal from the pain and trauma that Robert had caused us. We formed a strong bond with each other, and I'm very proud of my daughter for standing up for herself and making the difficult decision to cut ties with her father. As time passed, Tiffany continued to thrive, excelling in school and making new friends. I also found love again, and together we built a happy and supportive home for Tiffany.